Here's a quick recap of part one. So we want to find the equation of a sphere centered at a given point, tangent to a given plane. First step, we write down the equation of a sphere. We note that we have the center, so we're missing the radius. Using vector analysis, we saw that the radius was equal to three. Now, the key step, we had to draw the picture. So here I have a picture of a sphere. I put in a tangent plane to a given point. We want to move our picture around so that we have the plane perpendicular to the blackboard. Then I see that the radius is going to be the smallest distance among all distances from our center to points on the plane. For our second method, we minimize the distance function by finding a critical point. Now, we're going to choose x, y, z on the plane. We're going to form the function given by the distance from x, y, z to the center of the sphere. Okay, we get this function here. Then, we're going to take the equation of the plane and isolate y. So, now I could substitute this expression in for y. We have a function for distance entirely in terms of x and z. So, if I want to find critical points, we take the partials with respect to x and z, set them equal to zero, and solve. Now, we don't want to work with square roots, so a useful trick is to replace distance with distance squared. Okay, we'll call that capital D. Now, why does this work? If I take the partial of capital D with respect to x, chain rule says we get two times little d times the partial of little d with respect to x. Now, when can this partial be equal to zero? Well, if d is equal to zero, that's great. Distance is minimized since the smallest the distance can be is zero. Otherwise, we have partial of d with respect to x equal to zero, and that would be what we were looking for if we were just using the plane old distance function, so that works also. Now, we have our capital D. Take the partial with respect to x, so term by term, first term has only x's in it, so we take the derivative as normal. Middle term, we use the chain rule, two comes down, exponent goes to one. Derivative of the inside with respect to x, we get a two. The z I treat as a constant, so it goes to zero, five goes to zero, so we're only getting a factor of two on the outside. Then for the z minus three squared, there's no x here, so we treat it as a constant, so that goes to zero also. We set this equal to zero, then we move to the partial with respect to z. Same idea, there's no z in here, so it goes to zero. The middle term, we use the chain rule. Third term, we take the derivative as normal. Then we set it equal to zero. Now, that gives us two equations, so we clean them up to here. Note we have two equations and two unknowns. So if we add both equations, I get x plus z equals minus one. X is equal to minus z minus one. We'll substitute this into this equation, and that's gonna give me z equals one. Now if I take that one and put it into here, we get x equals minus two. And then I can take these, put them into our equation for y, and we get y equals one. So, this is gonna be the point where our tangent plane and our sphere intersect. Okay, that minimizes distance. Now, if we calculate the distance from this point to the center of the sphere, okay, we could just take minus two and one, put it into our distance squared formula. We get a nine, and if I take the square root, we get the radius equal to three. So that checks our work from part one.